what does family mean to you? You know, what is your definition of a family? That's a theme I'm going to talk about in today's video. What's up, everybody? My name is Brad, and today I've got another book review for you guys. And I'm going to be talking about Songbirds and Stray Dogs by Megan Lucas. Uh, this is her debut novel, and it's put out by Main Street Rag Publishing. And Megan was kind enough, and I was lucky enough that she did send me a copy of this for review consideration. So thank you, Megan. I really, really appreciate it uh, that you reached out and sent me a copy. Uh, before I forget, I want to mention that it was like a week or just a couple days after I got done reading it. Uh, this book actually won the first novel prize at the Indie Book Awards, uh, which is really cool, and it's deservedly so. Uh, Megan has crafted a beautifully written, character-driven novel uh, that I think everyone can relate to in one way or another. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and read the synopsis real quick and then give you the rest of my thoughts and everything on the book. 21-year-old Buford waitress Jolene has spent the majority of her life living in the shadow of the pain her mother caused and trying to prove herself worthy of her aunt's stingy love. Unintentionally pregnant and abandoned again, Jolene tries to outrun her shame in the mountains of western North Carolina. Songbirds and Stray Dogs is a southern story born of sweet tea and the Bible Belt, but it is also a universal story of escaping the burden of your past and finding yourself at home in a strange land. Uh, so for this book, for me, this book is sort of a song to or a ballad to the outcast, the downtrodden, uh, the down on your luck people that just things never seem to go their way, uh, people that try to do their best, but their best never seems quite good enough. Um, as the synopsis said, we follow Jolene. Uh, she's relatively young. I think she's either really late teens or just very early 20s and basically she's been abandoned her whole life. Um, I don't think she ever knew who her father was. Um, at a really young age, I want to say around like eight or so, uh, she was abandoned on her aunt's doorstep by her mother and her mother just vanished. She never saw her mother again. Um, and now that she is pregnant, um, she's been abandoned by the baby's father. She's been abandoned by her really her her caregiver the only family she had left her aunt her aunt is just disgusted that she's become pregnant she the aunt sort of feels like she's following in her mother's footsteps you know making bad decisions and ruining her life so she's abandoned by her as well and just cast out basically like a pile of trash by the one person left in her life who should be looking out for her should be taking care of her should be loving her and you know, one bad decision, one thing happens, and her aunt just, just casts her away um, and really doesn't even seem to think twice about it. Uh, so I really, really came to care for the character of Jolene, not just Jolene, but some other characters she meets in the story later on as well. And if you've been a fan of the channel at all, you know that I like bleak stories, and I usually like the villains and I like it when the bad guys win and that was not the case in this book uh, In this book I wanted Jolene to succeed you know I cared what was gonna happen to her and you know that's sort of different from what I'm normally ended up liking like I wanted her to have a happy ending um, and I think that's a testament to uh, Megan's writing and her great character development and just a really well crafted tale that I came to care and love so much these characters and I can't think of any characters you know just off the top of my head that I've really just cared and really really wanted and needed them to succeed uh, but once uh, Jolene's been kicked out of her aunt's house she's basically homeless again she just has like a little suitcase with all of her belongings in it uh, she has nowhere to go no one to turn to you know no one to help her out and she's just basically on her own, you know, newly pregnant. Uh, she sort of seems uh, naive a little bit. And I think that's another quality that really drew me to caring for her and wanting her to do well, wanting someone to take care of her. Uh, but that's not to say that she's not a strong woman. She's not a strong character because uh, she does fight. She does do what she needs to do to survive and get by and, you know, struggle through what she's going through. 
and even at times she's she's fighting for her life. Uh, so I don't want that to come across as that you know she's weak and can't take care of herself. Uh, she's definitely a strong woman character, but she just sort of have this naivety. I don't even know if that's a word. Naiveness uh, to her that I think helps you a lot in coming to care for her. Uh, but she's sort of out on her own, and she comes across a man named Chuck and his nephew Cash, and she sort of gets entwined in their lives, and they have their own sort of demons uh, that they are dealing with in their lives um, that sort of are, um, especially with Cash, really reflective of what Jolene has gone through, and her and Cash really have a, a bond together uh, with shared experiences that they've gone through. I don't want to dwell too much more on um, Chuck and Cash and them. Um, but I do like how the story's set up. Uh, I think part, I think there's four parts. I might be wrong. Um, I don't know. But I know part one is just sort of all about Jolene. Part two uh, is about Chuck and Cash. And then from there, their storylines sort of merge together for the rest of the book. Um, and I really, really enjoyed that. And Chuck and Cash, those two characters, I came to also love and care for. And wanted them to succeed and not have bad things happen to them um, and you know that wasn't necessarily always the case in the book uh, but this book it is full of grit and just hard people hard places and hard times and this book really tells the tale of hope and perseverance but Things don't always end up like they do in the fairy tales. We don't always get a happy ending, and that is sort of the case here. You know, it's not completely bleak. Um, I'll, maybe it's a bittersweet ending, I'll say that, without hopefully giving too much away. Uh, but as I've already said, I completely love these characters. And on the flip side of that, uh, there is a character in here that I just absolutely hated. Um, hate might even be a strong enough word for it. I loathe this character so much. Um, and like I said, I'm usually for the villains and the bleakness and stuff, but I hated this person with a passion. I was so frustrated at one point with what was going on. And I, when I say frustrated, I mean that as the best possible compliment, you know, that I cared so much about Jolene and Chuck and Cash that I was so pissed off when something bad happened to them, especially done by this one particular character. Um, and I said in my written review that I needed something bad to happen to this person and said, no, that's not strong enough. I want, or sorry, I got that backwards. I wanted something bad to happen to this person, but that wasn't strong enough. I needed something bad to happen to this person because I just could not stand them. And it wasn't that they were super villainous or anything. You know, they weren't, you know, they were a bad person but they didn't do just completely horrible, heinous acts. You know, they weren't just super villain. It's your normal, you know, every day. All these people in the whole book are you know, just your normal average people, but some of them are a lot darker than others. And, you know, compared to some other books that I have been reading recently, you know, with really heinous, depraved villains, you know, this one, this person wasn't on that level, but I feel like I hated them more because I love the characters in this one so much. If that makes sense any kind of sense at all. I know I'm sort of rambling now. Uh, but I told Megan this when I got in with the book. I told her how much I hated this person and she just sent me a smiley face back. Uh, <laughs> that just ha that just made me laugh. Uh, but real quick, I want to actually read the last part of my written review. I don't normally do that, uh, but I really like what I wrote and I know if I try to do it off the top of my head, I'm just gonna butcher it. So this is sort of my closing for the review. Um, and this is sort of the last paragraph of my written review. To me, this book was all about family, whether it was the one you were born with or the one you found. They say blood is thicker than water, and yes, that's true. But what happens when that blood dries up? What happens when you look down and see the dark scab lined hollow crater in your chest where your heart used to beat? Do you give up and lie down in that ditch on the side of the highway, or are you made of tougher stuff? Do you hold your chin high, even though it feels like it weighs a ton, and seek to forge bonds of your own? Ironclad bonds that no blood could ever hope to break. That's Jolene's story. That is the story of all those songbirds and stray dogs. So yeah, in closing, I absolutely love this book. 
Uh, the prose is beautiful. It's a really, really well-developed character story, and I can't recommend this one highly enough. Um, especially if you like Southern Grit Lit, you know, stuff like Ron Rash and David Joy and, you know, the Appalachian sorts of stories. I really think you'll love this story. Um, if you can't tell, this was a solid five-star read for me. Um, one of my favorite reads of the year so far, and like I said earlier, I can't wait to read more of what Megan Lucas has to offer. But yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, again, this has been my five-star review of Songbirds and Stray Dogs by Megan Lucas from Main Street Rag Publishing. Uh, but that's all I have for you guys today. So thanks for spending your time with me. Again, my name is Brad, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.